Hello, uh, this is again uh, Dr. Jehonathan Bentovich, um, and this is in continuation of the introduction that I gave for the new book that uh, uh, was recently published by iUniverse, uh, God's Physics, a New Scientific Paradigm for the 21st Century. And as I explained in the previous uh, presentation, uh, this is quite exciting because this new paradigm, which is being uh, increasingly accepted uh, by the scientific community as the new paradigm for uh, 21st uh, century theoretical physics. Uh, this book, the God's Physics uh, book, uh, published by iUniverse.com, um, this book um, portrays for the general public uh, this great scientific revolution in a sense, and today's topic, by the way, would be uh, fulfilling, fulfilling Einstein's quest, God's Physics, New 21st Century Paradigms, Multi-Level Computational Universe, um, and indeed, this uh, whole um, theory, new paradigm in physics, resolves the basic problem <clears throat> that uh, the great Einstein, the great Einstein, was working on for the um, second half of his illustrious scientific career to unify uh, relativity theory and quantum mechanics. And <clears throat> indeed, today's, excuse me. <clears throat> Indeed, today's uh, topic focuses primarily on uh, Einstein's uh, vision and in what manner this um, uh, new paradigm fulfills his vision. Um, okay, let me begin. The abstract is 21st century theoretical physics is undergoing a paradigmatic shift akin to Einstein's relativity theory, paradigmatic shift over 100 years ago from the old material causal paradigm, underlying both relativity theory and quantum mechanics, to the new computational unified field theory recently called God's Physics, new paradigm. This new God's Physics paradigm, paradigmatic shift, was called for due to the apparent theoretical inconsistency between the two pillars of the old material causal paradigm to account for up to 95% of all the mass and energy concepts that could not be verified empirically, that's dark energy and dark matter, which cannot be verified empirically. The new God's physics paradigm is based on the discovery of a singular higher order universal computational principle, which simultaneously computes all exhausted spatial pixels in the universe for each consecutive universal frame at the unfathomable rate of C squared divided by Planck's constant, which gives 1.36 and the power of minus 50, many billions of uh, times per second, with the entire universe dissolving into the UCP's singular singularity in between any two consecutive universal frames. This new God's physics, uh, a causal computation paradigm, was shown to challenge, negate, and revise some of the most fundamental assumptions of the old material causal paradigm, such as the Big Bang model, uh, Einstein's equations, discarding of dark matter and dark energy, which we mentioned, as superfluous, that is non-existent, and quantum mechanics material causal assumption regarding the collapse of the probability wave function due to its assumed direct physical interaction with another subatomic probe element. A few key and new theoretical postulates of the new God's physics paradigm include <clears throat> the universal computational formula shown capable of unifying the four basic forces as well as the four basic physical features of space, energy, mass and time and integrate all key relativistic and quantum laws and relationships. Nevertheless, God's physics new causal computational paradigm points at the complete dependency of the uh, universal computational pro uh, principles simultaneous computation of all exhaustive spatial pixels in the universe upon the UCP's 10, UCP is a uh, universal computational principle, 10 laws of a hier hierarchical manifestation, which include its three computational dimensions, supraspatial temporal reservoir, dynamic equilibrium moral principle, expansion of consciousness hypothesis, Collective human consciousness focus hypothesis, reverse time goal hypothesis, goodwill and free will characterization of this UCP, the universal computational principle. Therefore, the new God's physics paradigm of 21st century physics portrays an entirely new universe, which completely depends on the UCP's continuous computation, dissolution, sustenance, and evolution of all exhausted spatial pixels comprising the universe towards the ultimate goal of a perfected physically, morally, and spiritually state, spiritual state of the world and humanity, which realizes the singularity, unity, and goodness of this universal consciousness uh, reality called Geula in Jewish tradition. 
So what I want to do is uh, walk you through. These are, by the way, what I'm uh, reading you today uh, and summarizing. These are 10 uh, breakthrough uh, scientific articles um, that um, uh, are being published as part of this uh, God's Physics uh, uh, new book. And uh, essentially, um, these 10 uh, uh, new breakthrough articles uh, alter or um, summarize the basic change, profound change in physics as well as in the um, has ramifications for all of science, biology, evolution, etc. Um, so let me begin, uh, and just to make it clear, the book itself, God's Physics, um, the first half of the book is written, uh, it's all written for the layman uh, reader and the layman population because I think that apart from the, this uh, new paradigm uh, being uh, revolutionizing, being accepted and revolutionizing science and resolving the basic uh, pro unresolved problems that Einstein was working on uh, and um, uh, progressing uh, science um, considerably, um, uh, opening uh, vast new possibilities for scientific uh, uh, investigation and, um, and uh, understanding of the physical universe, its nature, its origin, its evolution, its goal, etc., but I think that um, uh, apart, so the book itself was written for the general public, uh, and uh, it's quite compelling. Um, there's a lot of uh, chapters here that uh, walk the layman reader uh, to understand, walk through the discovery and the significance of this profound new paradigm of physics. Uh, but I, I, I uh, also want to give uh, a taste of some of the scientific breakthroughs uh, which are uh, attached to this um, uh, book uh, in the ten, uh, nine articles. So this first article which we started uh, uh, focusing on, Fulfilling Einstein's Quest, God's Physics, New 21st Century Paradigms, Multi-Level Computational Universe. Um, okay, the introduction talks about God's Physics, New 21st Century Paradigm. Albert Einstein is considered one of the two greatest scientists the world has ever known. The other one being Isaac Newton, and his general theory of relativity is deemed the greatest intellectual achievement accomplished by any single human being. Yet this unwavering single singular yet his unwavering singular quest towards unifying field theory, which he worked on for the second half of his uh, uh, career, that will be able to resolve the apparent basic theoretical inconsistency between relativity theory and quantum mechanics which he carried relentlessly for the entire second half of his illustrious scientific career, was viewed by his contemporary as leading to a dead end, quote-unquote, and even was construed as indicating that Einstein has somehow lost his genius. Nevertheless, approximately 100 years since Einstein's begun his quest for such unifying field theory, theoretical physics is increasingly seeking such a theory of everything, which would in, essentially accomplish Einstein's vision of unifying relativity theory and quantum mechanics, as well as all uh, of the forces of nature. Uh, indeed, Einstein's own vision was to unify space-time, energy, and mass, relativity theory and quantum mechanics, and the plethora of elementary subatomic particles within one singular formula, um, stemming from a higher-order theoretical understanding of the nature of the field. He was looking for a unified field theory, and he was convinced that the field could unify all of these elements, which encompasses, integrates, and transcends the narrow constraints of the current relativistic and quantum theoretical models. It is no secret that quite a few of Einstein's hypotheses and predictions were tested and validated empirically many years after his passing in 1955, which has led to multiple Nobel Prizes, including his visionary hypothesis of gravitational waves, gravitational lensing, etc. Amazingly, it seems that Einstein's major quest for grand unifying field theory is being fulfilled by what's considered today as physics' new 21st century paradigm, the computation unified field theory, recently also termed God's physics paradigm. Prior to describing the gist of this new God's physics paradigm and delineating its basic theoretical postulates, it is important to first uh, uh, encapsulate the, sen the essence of the paradigmatic crisis of 20th uh, century basic material causal paradigm, underlined both relativity theory and its inevitable ensuing paradigmatic shift to the new God's physics uh, paradigm 21st century theoretical physics. Perhaps the clearest instance indicating the basic paradigmatic crisis of 20th century material causal paradigm is the apparent theoretical inconsistency that seems to exist between relativity theory's strict speed of light barrier of the transmission of any light signal across space and time, as opposed to quantum mechanics well-known and empirically validated quantum entanglement phenomena 
According to relativity theory's strict light speed barrier, it is not possible for any signal or any physical effect to travel or affect any other element at a speed greater than the speed of light. In contrast, the empirically validated quantum entanglement phenomena indicates that a subatomic measurement of any one of Heisenberg's uh, uncertainty principles complementary pairs, space and energy, or time and mass, in one of two entangled particles will inst instantaneously determine the other complementary pairs measurement accuracy level. Um, let me explain that. So essentially, in uh, um, the paradigmatic crisis, the 20th century physics of relativity theory and quantum mechanics has reached uh, uh, can be perhaps most clearly demonstrated or uh, we can understand that, we can see that most clearly by um, uh, the contradiction between relativity theories postulate that there's nothing in the universe that can travel faster than the speed of light uh, and um, so that means there is a cause and effect between a phenomena uh, taking place in one place and then a light signal traveling to another place to transmit that event uh, and uh, quantum entanglement in, in quantum mechanics which indicates that two entangled particles that have been conjoined and then they separate if you measure one of them uh, that affects instantaneously the other complementary, uh, uh, the other entangled particles complementary measurement. Without going into too many details, that's a basic contradiction between relativity theory and quantum mechanics. And actually, quantum entanglement has been validated. So there is a basic problem because relativity theory says nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. Um, and of course, then I mentioned the m major problem, uh, which is uh, of the, the old model, the, I call it the material causal model of uh, relativity theory and quantum mechanics, which is the inability of the, um, uh, the, the old model, relativity theory and quantum mechanics, to account for the accelerated expansion of the universe. Uh, according to the old model, um, there should be uh, what they call dark matter and dark energy, which comprise up to 95% of all the mass and energy in the universe, but yet cannot be um, experimentally uh, directly um, validated. Um, and so we find, and, and I mentioned here in the article and many other places, Thomas Kuhn, uh, a very famous philosopher of science in 1962, wrote the, a book called The Structure of Scientific um, uh, Revolutions. And he explains that science um, is um, uh, typified uh, or can be characterized as uh, alternating in its development between two phases. One is standard science in which there is a particular paradigm that works for science, for a specific discipline for a certain while, like uh, relativity theory and quantum mechanics. And they're both uh, underlined by the old material causal paradigm, as I call it. And then uh, science reaches a point where, uh, according to Kuhn, uh, Thomas Kuhn, uh, there is a, a, a paradigmatic crisis. And that is typified by what we see here and what has taken place in Einstein's case when he came out with relativity theory. And that is that there is a contradiction, apparent contradiction between the pillars of the old paradigm. In this case, relativity theory, quantum mechanics, there is a contradiction between them. Uh, such as what I explain now about the speed of light as opposed to barrier, as opposed to the quantum entanglement phenomena. Um, so that's a, an inconsistency. And in addition to that, there is also usually a, a series of phenomena or phenomena that cannot be explained um, uh, adequately by the old paradigm. In the case of uh, the old material causal paradigm of relativity theory and quantum mechanics of 20th century physics, this denotes the dark matter, dark energy concepts, which are completely hypothetical, have not been verified, and it still leave, leaves science in a state where the old paradigm cannot explain where 95% of all the mass and energy in the universe exist. Uh, that, by the way, I mentioned is very similar to what happened with Einstein, because when Einstein came along, uh, before his 1905 and 1915 um, uh, revolution of science with his relativity theory, uh, before that, Newtonian mechanics and Maxwellian electromagnetic theory, uh, which were the, the pillars of the older paradigm, they seem to contradict each other. And also, very similar to what, what's happening with dark matter, dark energy, there was an assumption that uh, the universe uh, is pervaded by a very fine substance called the ether, which again, there were many experiments that tried to verify or validate or uh, capture the existence of this ether concept, 
uh, hypothetical concept, and, and none has succeeded, including the famous Michelson-Morley experiment. And then Einstein came along and said, okay, if we cannot observe this um, ether concept, which is completely hypothetical, and we were trying to find it, but we cannot find it, then, well, it doesn't exist. It's superfluous. And he discarded the ether. He added a few theoretical postulates, um, uh, the constancy of the of light, the relativity principle, etc. And then this gave rise to relativity theory, which could explain and actually could um, um, uh, include uh, Newtonian mechanics as a special case in the broader understanding. Um, so we're standing in a very similar situation. There is a paradigmatic crisis. It calls for a paradigmatic shift, uh, as described by Kuhn, and essentially replicates what Einstein himself, the great Einstein, did. Uh, and I'm going to get into that. So, um, so what we're doing now is looking at some of the basic um, the theoretical postulates of this new God's physics paradigm. Uh, and I'm going to list them briefly. Obviously, it's uh, you know in a, in a short presentation. It cannot I, we cannot go into many details, but it's delineated in the book and in these articles. So the one, the first uh, postulate is uh, the universal computational slash consciousness principle. According to the new God's physics paradigm, there exists a singular higher ordered universal computational consciousness principle, UCP, which simultaneously computes every exhaustive spatial pixel in the universe at the unfathomable rate of c squared divided by Planck's constant, which gives us 1.36 in the power, power of minus 50 per second. So it's many, many billions of times per second that this UCP computes simultaneously every spatial pixel in the universe. Very hard to imagine even, but that's the, the postulate and that's this essence of the, this new theory, a major discovery. Um, and some of these things, uh, obviously, there's predictions that can be tested, which I call for. Um, and at, like in the case of Einstein's um, validation of his relativity theory, with one of his critical predictions, which was Mercury's uh, perihelion uh, uh, double valued uh, uh, curvature of, um, of uh, Mercury's pathway around the sun due to the bending uh, or the curvature of space time by massive objects such as the sun. The minute that that critical prediction was validated, because it was a, a unique critical prediction which differed from Newtonian uh, mechanics prediction, um, so therefore Einstein's new paradigm was accepted. And, and this is the same case. I'm calling for a scientist for a while now to validate a few critical predictions and validating even one of them, which cannot be explained by the old paradigm, would lead to the uh, complete acceptance of this new paradigm. It's already widely being acknowledged and accepted, but obviously there needs to be an experimental direct validation. By the way, there's been already an initial validation with the proton radius puzzle findings, uh, which I wrote about. So anyway, the first um, uh, postulate is the universal computational consciousness principle. And again, it says that this UCP simultaneously computes all the spatial pixels in the universe simultaneously. And without going into too many details, I'm talking about three dimensions, especially two of them, uh, computational dimensions, which the UCP, this Universal Computational Consciousness Principle, uh, utilizes to, to um, compute for each exhaustive spatial pixel simultaneously the four basic physical features that we're aware of, which is space, energy, mass, and time. These two relevant um, um, uh, computational dimensions are framework, which essentially uh, uh, relates to whether this UCP computes a certain spatial pixel in relationship to the framework, to the entire universe uh, and its degree of change or lack of change between frames. Uh, so that's framework. And then, uh, or it, the framework actually includes both whether a frame, so the entire frame relative to the entire frame, or object, whether the UCP computes the degree of change or lack of change in a particular uh, spatial pixel or object relative to itself across frames. Uh, so these three computational dimensions, they give rise to the four basic physical features of space, energy, time, and mass. And again, quite amazing, but according to this new paradigm, the um, UCP computes simultaneously all the exhaustive spatial pixels in the universe, many billions per times per second, and for each one of them, it computes the degree of change or lack of change uh, across frames, whether for that speci uh, specific spatial pixel relative to itself, I mean, it's consti uh, uh, constitution, uh, so that gives rise to, to uh, mass, lack of change, time change, or whether to the entire frame, 
to the framework, to the entire frame, that will give rise to um, uh, space. So that's lack of change or energy degree of change. The second one is the computational invariance principle in universal consciousness reality. Very profound new uh, understandings of the universe in these theoretical postulates. Essentially, this computational invariance principle and universal consciousness reality, essentially they, they discover or they postulate that since, uh, according to this new God's physics paradigm, computational invariance field theory uh, paradigm, um, since according to this uh, new paradigm, um, the UCP actually computes each time that it simultaneously computes the entire universe, it gives rise to a frame, to a universal frame. It's very similar, I'm using this cinematic film metaphor, it's very similar to uh, what we see in a film, that we can see an object, for example, moving a, a jet uh, plane, um, moving from one frame to another. This gives us the appearance of velocity, of energy. But really, if we stop the frames, we would see that there's no um, movement, there's just a displacement of that object between frames. So, so that gives us the uh, impression or the measurement, the perception of energy. Um, and so, but the second postulate says, the computational invariance principle, universal consciousness reality, says something very profound. It says that because, according to this uh, God's physics new paradigm, the UCP, this universal computational consciousness principle, it exists both in between the frames, because uh, the universe is assumed to dissolve between one frame and another, akin to the light that we see between any two uh, uh, cinematic film frames. Uh, somewhat similar, in this theory, um, the UCP dissolves the whole universe back into itself between one frame and another. And so what we see is that the UCP actually exists both in between the frames, where the, uni the physical universe dissolves, so there's no physical universe, it's all uh, encapsulated within the UCP. So the UCP exists both in between the frames, in which the physical universe does not exist, it dissolves back to the UCP, and the UCP also exists during the, the frames, the universal frames, because it computes in each spatial pixel all the simultaneous spatial pixels of the universe. So the computational invariance principle says that since the UCP exists both in between the frames, where the universe dissolves, and also exists within the frames, because it is the, the, the principle that gives rise, computes, and creates all the spatial pixels, all of their sp space, energy, mass, and time, but that, but in contrast, the physical universe, the four physical fe uh, basic fe features of space, energy, mass, and time, uh, which we explain are computed by the UCP through the two the computational dimensions of uh, framework and consistency. So these four basic physical features, they dissolve in between the frames and they don't exist. So therefore, the computational invariance principle essentially says that since the UCP exists both in between the frames and also um, solely without the universe and also exists during the frames and it gives rise and actually computes the four physical basic uh, physical features of uh, space, energy, mass and time, therefore we must uh, acknowledge, we must reach the inevitable conclusion that the, the only computational uh, invariant element in the universe that doesn't change, that exists continuously, is this UCP. Whereas the computational variant elements of the four basic physical features of space, energy, mass, and time, they exist only transiently or transitorily and phenomenally. They seem to exist during the frames, but they're really just a manifestation of this universal computational or consciousness principle. And indeed, the, the um, universal consciousness reality, which ensues from this computational invariance uh, principle, is very profound in our understanding, profound change in our understanding of the physical universe. Because it says, so in fact, the only reality that exists uh, continuously and constantly is this universal computational or consciousness principle. We get to the idea that the universal computational principle is really a universal consciousness principle because... Uh, uh, we realize that there's no transference of any physical uh, spatial pixel, any mass, energy, space, or time, any physical effect between the frames. The frames dissolve, and in between, the, their, um, uh, in between them, uh, there's only the UCP. So this UCP must possess those universal consciousness uh, characterizations, which means it remembers 
it uh, uh, reproduces and it evolves every spatial pixel. There's no material entity that can pass between these frames. So the only thing that really exists continuously and constantly, the only thing that really exists is this universal consciousness principle. And it remembers, um, produces, dissolves, then recreates and evolves the whole physical universe. It's quite profound, of course. Um, the universal computational formula. We get this, by the way, is portrayed also at the bottom of, uh, uh, at the, bottom of uh, the book, uh, the universal computational formula. And it's also portrayed here in the, uh, uh, in the uh, article. And essentially, this universal computational formula um, um, is, uh, says that all the forces of nature uh, and the, the four basic physical features of space, energy, uh, mass, and time can be um, computed uh, or are computed actually by the um, uh, universal computational principle or uh, um, universal, universal consciousness reality. That's signified by the, by the Hebrew letter Yud. Um, and uh, so the universal computational formula essentially says that Yud, this universal computational pr um, principle, computes at the rate of C squared divided by Planck's constant a series, all uh, the frames of past, present, and multiple futures uh, are uh, uh, retained within this universal computational principle, within this Yud. Um, and so it's uh, a here universal frames in brackets uh, from Aleph to uh, Aleph Mem Taf, it's the first Hebrew letter, middle one, and the last one. That's just a, a pre re, uh, presentation of the fact that the universal computational principle or consciousness principle has uh, within what I call the multi spatial temporal reservoir, has already all the bank of the frames from all the past, present, and multiple possible futures of the universe. Um, but for each universal frame that it computes, uh, for each spatial pixel, exhausted spatial pixel, it computes simultaneously. For each one of these pixels, uh, it computes that by space times energy divided by times uh, time uh, multiplied by mass. So that's universal computational formula, and uh, it's important to say that this universal computational formula has uh, two formats. One is the relativistic. One, the other one is the quantum which essentially replicate uh, major findings and major relationships such as the E equals MC square uh, in the case of relativity theory, uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, complementary pairs, but those are represented as special cases within this um, much broader understanding. So that would be, uh, we, we spoke about God's physics, a new paradigm, uh, the computational invariance uh, principle, universal consciousness reality, we spoke about the universal computational formula, we go to the dynamic equilibrium moral principle, UCP multi-spatial multi temporal reservoir. And essentially, uh, these are quite profound new understandings, but this, this theoretical postulates, postulate essentially says that uh, we have um, UCP, um, uh, since the only reality is this universal consciousness reality, uh, therefore, it is postulated that as a characterization of this uh, universal consciousness reality, there is uh, uh, an element of um, um, uh, unity and harmony and moral balance. I call that the dynamic equilibrium moral principle, and it's associated with the UCP multi-spatial temporal reservoir, which I spoke about. Essentially, it says that the UCP cares very much about our human moral choices because it uh, essentially uh, postulates that since all human consciousness, individual human consciousness, meaning individual human beings, they're all integral parts. Uh, they're not separate from this universal consciousness reality. Any time that one individual human consciousness uh, executes or chooses, um, for example, uh, God forbid, uh, an immoral choice, then that immoral choice uh, would be uh, could be portrayed as imagine um, a trampoline in which you have um, uh, two points connected by a metal bar. And if one of these metal, one of these points would push the metal bar to inflict pain or suffering, God forbid, on the other universal con uh, individual human consciousness, automatically the elast elasticity of this uh, membrane of the, the the trampoline would push the metal bar again against the the first individual human consciousness that inflicted pain, so that it would uh, actually experience 
uh, in some form or fashion the same uh, suffering that it inflicted on the other point and that is because universal consciousness reality uh, is Im- embedded uh, imbued by a moral principle it's uh, essentially trying to bring the whole universe into a state of uh, moral uh, um, uh, harmony and perfection and so this so essentially it says that the UCP computes um, it has all the bank the multi-spatial temporal reservoir all the po- all the uh, uh, frames of past present and multiple possible futures <clears throat> and um, uh, the way in which it computes the multiple futures depends on the moral choices that uh, we as individual human consciousness uh, individuals are making so when we are making an immoral choice we are actually selecting or we're uh, um, uh, leading the UCP to select for us uh, a future that would actually um, bring to us to our attention the same immoral action that we've done towards another individual human consciousness we will have to experience that and vice versa if we're doing a, an act of uh, mercy and uh, goodness towards another human being we will the UCP will compute one of the multiple futures for us specifically so that we will reap the benefits of what we've, we've, uh, the action that we've done. Then we have this um, UC, uh, universal consciousness reality, this expansive consciousness spectrum hypothesis and reverse time goal hypothesis. I'll speak about this very briefly. Essentially it says that this, use, universe, this universal consciousness reality um, has a plan, as it were, for the evolution of the universe. And the reverse time goal hypothesis and what's associated with that is the expansive consciousness spectrum hypothesis essentially uh, advocates that the UCP or the UCR, the universal consciousness reality, is a singular reality that really exists all the time, uh, which manifests as the, the physical universe during the frames, but, but exists without the universe in between the frames. That soul reality, universal consciousness reality, it has a plan. It's actually computing the whole evolution of the universe from the end, so to speak. The end is a state of what we call in Jewish tradition, geula, in scientific terms that would mean a state of moral, uh, uh, physical, moral, spiritual and physical perfection in which there is complete harmony and peace. There is no aggression, there is no wars. Um, there is a humanity that acknowledges and, um, and um, acts in accordance with the discovery that everything is actually just a part of this universal conscious reality and um, uh, so so this so the, the universal conscious reality computes the whole universe from the end so to speak from the geula stage from that state of moral uh, spiritual and physical perfection in which the oneness and the uh, singularity and the goodwill uh, of uh, nature uh, of this singular uh, universal consciousness reality is realized by humanity and it lives accordingly with that. Um, so the, the UCR computes the whole universe from the end, that is the ultimate goal of Geula, uh, the perfected moral, spiritual, physical state uh, of the oneness of this UCR, this universal consciousness reality or God. So the UCR computes the whole universe from the end uh, ultimate goal of um, uh, Geula, this perfected state. It computes the whole universe from its perspective from the, the risk time goal hypothesis. From the goal, it computes the whole universe from its inception, uh, that is, from the first frame, second frame, third frame, etc., leading towards this Gugel state. And by the way, the second part of that is that because this Gugel state, this universal consciousness reality, is uh, its goal is to br- lead the universe towards this perfected state and this perfected state can be realized only by human beings which possess the most expansive form of consciousness they can uh, we as scientists and uh, laymen uh, we can begin realizing and appreciating and thanking this uh, universal consciousness reality animals cannot do that obviously and uh, uh, inanimate objects cannot do that so there is a plan that actually evolves the UCR, this universal conscious reality, evolves the whole universe from inanimate to uh, uh, animate, uh, that is plants, then animals, then human beings, up to leading to human beings reaching that perfected state, that geula state. That's the plan and that's the progression of the evolution of the universe. That's a very different way of looking at the evolution of the universe, both physically and uh, biologically, 
because as, we, as we've explained, and I'll explain this in other lectures and throughout the book, that there is no cause and effect. Um, the, the new paradigm is called the a-causal computation paradigm, and essentially it says that there is no cause and effect because during each frame, all the spatial pixels are computed simultaneously by the UCP, uh, UCR, Universal Comput Computational uh, Reality or Principle, and between each two frames, the whole universe devolves, dissolves back into the UCP, so there cannot be any cause and effect either during the frames or between the frames. So therefore you would ask, so what evolves the universe? And by the way, the implication is, I, I think it's, uh, it appears here as well, the implication is that there's no Big Bang, uh, not, as, not in the sense that it created the universe, because the universe dissolves in between each two consecutive frames and there's no cause and effect anyway. So the idea is that the way that the UCR or UCP, Universal Conscious Reality, evolves the whole universe, it, uh, first of all, it computes the whole universe from the end goal result, um, the, the end, result, uh, goal, uh, end goal result of uh, Geula, the perfected state of the unity, the recognition of humanity, of the unity and um, singularity and um, um, divine nature of this uh, higher reality. Um, it computes the whole universe from that ultimate goal back. So the whole universe is evolving towards that perfected state. Therefore, the expansive expansion of uh, consciousness, the um, uh, expansive consciousness spectrum hypothesis essentially says that this UCR is uh, ev evolving the whole universe from inanimate matter through animate plants, animals, human beings, and leading to this Geula state of the expansions of consciousness and realization of humanity of the singularity of this UCR. Um, now we get to the God's Physics new, newly revised um, uh, uh, physical universe. So, hence, the discovery of the new God's Physics paradigm completely alters and revises our basic conception and understanding of the origin, nature, sustenance, dynamics, and evolution of the entire physical universe at both its macroscopic, relativistic, and microscopic quantum computational levels. Um, at the macroscopic level, we realize that the physical universe could not have been caused or created by the, an initial Big Bang nuclear event. And again, because uh, um, a Big Bang event would mean that there would be a, a nuclear event that would create uh, from one frame to another. Actually, they're not speaking in terms of frames, but that would mean that th there is ex exists a nuclear event that creates now uh, suns and galaxies and, plan and planets and energy and mass, etc. But that, but in terms of the new paradigm, because that would imply that in the first frame, if there existed a Big Bang explosion or a nuclear event, it would have dissolved between the first frame and the second frame and the third frame, and now we're still, it's still happening. So, so there cannot be a cause and effect. And I've lectured about this in multiple uh, international physics conferences and a special issue has come out um, also describing that, uh, focusing on this new paradigm of 20th, 21st century physics. So there can't, could, not, could not have been a Big Bang um, nuclear event as the uh, cause for the origination of the universe. And the universe, by the way, is not evolving as relativity theory is saying based on Einstein's equations, which essentially says that mass or massive objects curve space and time, space and time determines the traveling pathways of, of these massive and less massive objects. Again, these are all based on the mat old material causal paradigm, which assumes that there is a cause and effect between uh, either massive objects and space-time, or between the pr um, uh, probability um, uh, uh, wave function of the target element and the probe element, which collapses, it's a cause and effect, collapses the, the uh, probability wave function, targets probability wave function into a singular uh, uh, complementary uh, uh, value, this old paradigm collapses or, or actually is inaccurate. It has to be expanded. So therefore, the new universe does not, uh, um, has not been um, created by a Big Bang. It's being continuously created and dissolved and recreated by this UCR, Universal Conscious Reality. And there's no cause and effect either within a frame or between frames. The similarly, in the quantum level, there cannot be a physical interaction between the probe element and the target element because that because they're both computed simultaneously at each of the frames and there cannot be any transference of let's say if they have interacted 
the collapse, quote unquote, of the probability wave function would imply that in one frame they've interacted and then this would have transferred to the other frame, but that cannot uh, be the case. First, they cannot interact in any, any frame because they're presented simultaneously. Second of all, they dissolve in between the frames, so there cannot be any transference, any collapse of the probability wave function. That, that's how it seems to us. But again, the new paradigm explains it in a much broader way. I'll talk about it in other uh, presentations about the uh, single, multiple, spatial, and, and exhaustive spatial temporal um, uh, computation of the UCP, which gives rise to what we perceive as a particle or an object in relativity theory, a wave, a wave which is a multi-spatial temporal uh, uh, computation simultaneously, or the whole frame uh, being computed simultaneously, which is really the case by the UCP. Okay, um, it's elaborate, but we're getting through it. God's new uh, God does not play with dice. God's physics UCP universal conditional formula and hierarchical laws of manifestation. I'm going to skim through it because it's very uh, intense. Essentially, it says that um, uh, um, the the four uh, forces of uh, the, the the four basic physical features of space, energy, mass, and time uh, they're all uh, being computed by this universal consciousness reality. There is a paradigmatic shift from the old material causal paradigm that assumed, assumes or assumed that the physical universe um, is um, a big machine operating by the interaction between massive objects and space-time. Einstein's equations describing this uh, interplay um, and in the quantum level uh, the, the assumption that the direct interaction between the probe uh, element, subatomic element and the, the target's uh, probability wave function causes the collapse "Quote unquote" of the probability wave function to a singular uh, value, um, and so we have to understand that um, uh, the new uh, uh, universe portrayed by this God's physics paradigm, uh, which is an acausal computation, it says there is no cause and effect. What really exists is this UCP, UCR, universal consciousness reality, that simultaneously compute uh, all the spatial pixels. That gives rise to a series of frames. The frames dissolve, uh, or the universe, which is portrayed by the frames, dissolve between one frame and another. So the only reality, as we spoke uh, about in this universal consciousness reality, the only reality is this universal consciousness reality. And the physical universe, both at the macroscopic level and the, the subatomic level, are just a, a transient manifestation, a phenomenal manifestation of this universal consciousness reality. Um, and so, um, what we, uh, what we uh, um, are progressing towards is really an understanding, um, as we said, that the whole universe is evolving, basically. Uh, so we have one last idea here, and then, then we'll try to encapsulate the whole thing with uh, fulfilling Einstein's quest. Um, so we reached the point, we reached the conclusion that really, the universe doesn't exist as an independent reality, as a material causal reality. It is completely dependent. It's all the time being created, dissolved, recreated, and evolved at each exhaustive spatial pixel by this universal consciousness reality. And uh, therefore, there's no cause and effect. There's just, um, as it were, the, um, the um, uh, plan and the uh, progression of the universe based on the UCR, universal consciousness reality, which manifests as the universe. So the dynamics of the universe, the way it evolves, uh, the real nature of the universe can only be understood by looking at the characterizations of this higher ordered singular universal consciousness reality. And I'm uh, delineating here 10 laws of hierarchical manifestation, which characterize really the operation of this singular higher order universal consciousness reality. Um, some of it, some of which we spoke about, but still, these are the characterizations of this higher ordered uh, universal consciousness reality. Ten laws of hierarchical manifestation. They begin with the three computational dimensions, framework, consistency, and locus, which we said UCP is using them to compute uh, space, energy, uh, mass, and time for each spatial pixel simultaneously. So that's the level of the physical universe uh, phenomenon or appearance. Second one is the UCP's universal conditional formula, which we spoke about, complete integration of space, energy, time, and mass. As a side note, Einstein, uh, in relativity theory, was able to unify between space-time, so that became a continuum, and uh, energy mass, the energy mass E equals mc squared um, uh, equivalence, and then the curvature of space-time by massive objects. 
But still, it's not a complete integration of space, time, energy, and mass. But the universal computational formula, and I'll talk about it in another article, do integrate completely space, um, uh, uh, space, energy, mass, and time in one formula. It's a complete integration, and they really like uh, just a um, secondary computational byproducts of the singular operation of this universal computational principle through the universal computational formula. Then the universal computational formula, this, the third one is the UCP's superspatial temporal reservoir, multiple possible futures. Spoke about it uh, again. The idea that the UCP computes cares about uh, one of the characteristics of this UCP or UCR is that it's it's a unifying element. So for the UCP, all individual human consciousness, uh, human beings are really um, uh, different parts or integral parts of the same reality. And therefore, if there is one human being that inflicts pain on another human being, that has to be corrected, that moral imbalance has to be corrected, and that manifests in the reservoir, this, the superspatial temporal reservoir of all the possible futures, and also past, present, and all possible futures, that is computed, the possible futures, the selection of one of multiple possible futures for each one of the individual human consciousness, individual human beings in, uh, on the planet, is computed by this UCR, in order to restore this moral balance. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So that's the UCP's <coughs> dynamic equilibrium moral, moral principle. Then the UCP's expansion of consciousness inanimate and animate hypothesis. We spoke about the, the fact that the plan, as it were, of this UCR is to lead the universe from inanimate to animate plants, uh, animals, human beings, and then to the perfected Gula state. So the whole evolution of consciousness is not the result of a Big Bang arbitrary event and then Einstein's equations, the arbitrary interaction between massive objects in space-time, or on a biological level, Darwin's natural selection principle seemingly indicating that the whole evolution of uh, uh, plants, uh, animals, human beings is random and it's just a cause and effect between the environment and uh, specific uh, organisms or genetic mutations, again, interaction between ultraviolet uh, cosmic rays and uh, genetic um, uh, material. That's not the case. There cannot be any cause and effect in that sense. So what is the case is that the UCR evolves the whole universe through a plan, uh, a preordained plan to reach the Gula state from the inanimate, animate, plants, animals, human beings, and then leading to the Gula state. Um, the UCP's Collective Human Consciousness Focus Hypothesis and Jewish Rosh Hashanah uh, New Year Non-Continuous Accelerated Expansion Rate Prediction. That's actually one of the critical predictions of this new God's Physics Paradigm. I've called cosmologists, astronomers um, to test this hypothesis or this prediction very similar to one of the predictions of Einstein's about Mercury's perihelion's curvature, increased curvature. In, in this case, uh, there is a hypothesis that the collective human consciousness focus hypothesis means uh, or implies that it's hypothesized that whenever you have a, a large uh, group of human beings that focus on this universal consciousness reality, such as in the case of the Jewish Rosh Hashanah New Year, uh, which is a two days in which millions of Jews are across the world focus and pray to this uh, singular universal consciousness reality, God reality, so when we have such a collective human consciousness, that leads to a non-continuous accelerated expansion of the universe. And one of the predictions that can be tested, and I'm calling again for all um, cosmologists, astronomers, experimental physicists to carry out this prediction, uh, and that is that during these two days of uh, uh, the Jewish Rosh Hashanah New Year uh, time, special time, in which there is a collective human consciousness uh, praying and focusing on this God reality, on this universal consciousness reality, that leads to um, uh, a non-continuous leap, as it were, to a non-continuous um, increase in the accelerated rate of the universe's expansion. And this, in a sense, closes a circle, because we began in, by saying that the, the old paradigm of the material causal paradigm, underlying relativity theory and quantum mechanics, has reached a state of paradigmatic crisis, akin to what happened with Einstein um, between Newtonian mechanics and, uh, um, and Maxwellian electromagnetic theory, they were incompatible. And there was back then also a problem where, 90, where uh, the universe was supposed to be perfused by the ether, which could not be found. We spoke about it. 
and Einstein discarded that. And uh, one of the problems that we mentioned that indicates this paradigmatic crisis uh, of the old paradigm of relativity theory and quantum mechanics is the accelerated expansion of the universe, which essentially this accelerated expansion of the universe implies that um, that right now with the old material paradigm, uh, material causal paradigm of relativity theory, there should have been 95% more mass and energy in the universe which cannot be observed and are completely hypothetical and right now are assumed to comprise dark matter, dark energy, but that cannot be verified. And by the way, according to the new paradigm, it cannot exist because of the, the, the non-existence of any material interactions in the universe. But in any event, they cannot be observed. So therefore, the new paradigm discards dark matter, dark energy as superfluous, very similar to Einstein's uh, discarding of the ether as superfluous, as non-existent. Instead, the new paradigm suggests and predicts a unique prediction, and that is the non-continuous accelerated expansion of the universe during Rosh Hashanah, during these two days of intense focus, collective human consciousness focus on the universal conscious reality, God. Due to that focus, collective human consciousness focus, there is a non-continuous leap or increase in the rate, the accelerated rate of the universe's expansion. And again, to the extent that that will be verified empirically that would validate uh, the new God's physics paradigm uh, in a direct way. And there's other predictions that it called for, which I'll get into uh, later. Um, the reverse time goal hypothesis, that would be, again, that the fact that the, in these 10 laws of hierarchical manifestation, the universal consciousness reality is actually driving the whole universe based on its end goal. It's driving the universe, leaving us, of course, human beings, the moral choice, the free moral choice, according to which our, um, one of possible multiple futures is enacted. But still, there is a grand plan of this universal conscious reality to lead the universe towards the Gula state. Then the two last, um, two highest uh, hierarchical laws of manifestation of the UCR, goodwill hypothesis, the, the, the notion that this universal conscious reality is all goodness and its uh, nature is to um, uh, sustain, create, sustain, evolve life and uh, all the um, uh, material um, uh, goodness and abundance in the universe uh, and spiritual are from this uh, God will hypothesis. And then the UCP's free will hypothesis. Obviously, this universal conscious reality is not bound by any material laws. It has free will, as it were. And out of its free will, it um, um, uh, opts to create the universe, to create, to, to, to manifest the universe through the ten hierarchical laws of manifestation. Um, and then we're reaching the uh, conclusion of this uh, fascinating, art, fascinating article, and that's essentially God's physics hierarchical multi-level computational universe leading to Gula. Essentially, uh, uh, we said that this uh, article speaks about fulfilling Einstein's quest. Einstein's quest was to unify, unify relativity theory and quantum mechanics in one grand unifying field theory. And um, what we have here is really fulfilling Einstein's quest because we've discovered, first of all, that there is such a unifying uh, field theory, I call it the computational, computational unified field theory, by the way, in, uh, uh, in uh, great respect to Einstein's uh, visionary quest to find that unifying field theory. Uh, now it's called God's physics, but it's still computational unified field theory. God's physics essentially fulfills Einstein's quest because it actually unifies relativity theory and quantum mechanics. Um, we'll talk about it in other uh, presentations, but essentially the universal computational formula which we spoke about unifies relativity theory and quantum mechanics. There is even a, a specific relativistic and quantum format which I spoke about and appears in the 50 plus articles that have been published and in the book peer-reviewed articles that have been published and in the book and in the special issue. So this universal computational formula has a relativistic format, a quantum format, and it actually indicates that uh, elements of uh, E equals mc square, uh, uh, energy mass equivalence of relativity theory, elements such as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, complementary pairs, they appear in uh, this universal uh, computational formula as special cases. And so this inversal computational formula unifies, completely integrates relativity theory and quantum mechanics. It completely integrates the four basic physical features of space, energy, mass, and time uh, within this inversal computational formula. 
Um, it uh, unifies the four forces of uh, nature, which is also an unresolved problem today. Um, and it does uh, so by essentially um, uh, understanding that there is a universal consciousness uh, uh, reality that uh, creates, dissolves, uh, recreates and evolves every exhaustive spatial pixel simultaneously in the universe. The whole universe evolves based on the plan, on this grand plan uh, towards leading towards the ultimate goal of Geul, of moral, spiritual and physical perfection. Um, and so it also unifies, by the way, the evolution of what we see, uh, perceive as physical, biological, uh, and even spiritual elements that are all unified within that. Um, and so we're reaching that uh, the end of this article. Let me just uh, recapitulate. Uh, Einstein's quest was to unify relativity theory and quantum mechanics. This is still the biggest unresolved problem of uh, physics. And um, uh, based on the paradigmatic crisis that physics and science find itself in 21st century, akin to uh, the, the, the paradigmatic crisis that preceded Einstein's discovery and revolution of physics with his relativity theory and later quantum mechanics, this paradigmatic shift uh, is being resolved now. This paradigmatic crisis is being resolved by a par paradigmatic shift from the old material causal paradigm underlying relativity theory and quantum mechanics towards the new um, uh, acausal computation paradigm of God's physics or computational unified field theory. That new paradigm uh, essentially says that the universe was not created by a Big Bang. The universe has been continuously created, dissolved, recreated, and evolved by the singular reality which underlies the universe, and that's this universal conscious reality. This universe, if we want to understand the operation of the universe, we cannot any longer look at cause and effect per se, because the cause and effect do not exist uh, in reality. They're, they do not exist as material causal interactions. They exist as a progression of frames that are being computed simultaneously and led by the plan of this universal conscious reality to lead the whole universe from inanimate to animate plants, uh, animals, human beings, and leading to this perfected state. So it's a very exciting uh, time that we live in. And uh, again, this God's Physics uh, book published by uh, iUniverse, uh, it portrays, by the way, at the bottom, the universal consciousness formula, which I spoke about. Uh, and I've just read to you and uh, summarized one of the nine breakthrough scientific articles that are being published for the first time uh, in the book. Um, and um, I invite um, uh, the readers uh, to uh, read the book and, um, and uh, get acquainted with this new paradigm of uh, 21st uh, century theoretical physics. Uh,